We could also use the shape tools to generate our surfaces, such as the rectangle tool, rotated rectangle, the circle tool, and of course the polygon. If you want to use the rectangle, you could just type R on your keyboards to activate the tool. And by default, SketchUp draws in the horizontal plane. So you just click, drag, click. Now, if you want to draw your surface on a different plane other than the horizontal plane, you could use the arrow keys to lock our drawing plane in that direction. So if I want to draw the rectangle along the green axis, it must be perpendicular to the red axis. So I'll hit the right arrow key and the rectangle turns into red signifying that it is perpendicular to the red axis and I know that it is parallel to the Y and Z plane. And to be more specific, I could draw from the origin of the axis. Then again, click, drag, click. Then spacebar to go back to the select tool. We could select Laura first by window selection or window crossing. However, that would accidentally select also other entities on your drawing. So in order to be more specific, you could either click if the object is a component or just simply do a window selection and make sure that nothing else are selected aside from the object or entity you want to select. We could always add entities to our selection by pressing control and then select. Crossing, window, or deselect by simultaneously pressing control shift. And again, make sure that the only desired entity is the only one selected. And if you are sure of it, you could just hit delete. Now, to be more accurate in your models, let's select all the rectangles and then just hit delete to erase them. So, let's create another rectangle, this time a box. Let's start from the origin and draw it on the horizontal plane. And let's type the dimensions. So, 5000, 5000, and then enter. So, I'm sure that the box or square is 5,000 by 5,000 millimeters. Once you have generated your desired shape, you could now proceed to generate its 3D using the push or pull tool. So that's P on our keyboards. Then select by clicking and then drag towards the desired direction. Normally, of course, perpendicular to the face and again to be accurate let's type the dimension let's type 5000 then zoom out see the entirety of your drawings or shift z to zoom extent again we could divide faces and we could use inferences to be accurate in our drawings we divide faces as well as divide lines and make them independent of the adjacent phases. You could further edit it, remove unwanted lines. You could further modify it by dividing the phases. Then again, using the push pull tool. Then fill the phases that you want to fill. We could draw directly surfaces on the faces itself and we could use inferencing to draw at exact locations. Then further modify that face. We could further modify our model by using the different the tools here in the toolbar. For example, let's create a uh, two-point arc. So let's say from midpoint here, the midpoint there, 
then make sure that it is locked into the tangent of these lines then click then we could again use the push pull tool to generate the desired shape another interesting tool is the follow me tool let's just create another arc from this point towards the point again make sure it's tangent and let's click on the follow me tool so you could either do this in two ways so first we could uh, select immediately the face and then follow the lines where you want it to follow and it beveled the edges of our box or let's press undo faster way is use first the select tool and then select on the edges that we want to use as the path for our follow me tool then after selecting the path click on the follow me tool and then just click on the profile to immediately bevel the edges then just erase the test geometries making sure that only those unwanted lines are the ones you are deleting sometimes if you for example let's window select we want to select only for example these uh, edges so i want to window select for example and accidentally i selected other lines The view of the faces comes in handy, especially using X-ray or wireframe. I better use X-ray. I could see, for example, when I select this one, I could see that I have selected the edge of this circle or perimeter or circumference of this circle. So, view, face, and then X-ray. 